Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in the Pong series. So this is recorded like eight months too late, but I figured I would throw it in here because it's probably important. I have all the code already done because um, I already did the code. And if you were watching this series, then you'll notice I skipped it on accident. I don't know how that happened, but I'm fixing it now. So uh, basically what I'm going to go over is just the ball movement because that was the only missing piece. And I'm going to delete this code in just a second so that we can rewrite it and you guys can see how it works exactly. So it may not be exactly the same as it will be in the tutorial. And there will be some stuff in this tutorial that um, we will not have gone over yet. But don't worry, that will come in the next few tutorials. But the feature parity will remain the same. So we will have the same uh, result no matter what. So let's figure out how to get this ball moving across the screen. Um, if you don't already, create a ball class because I don't think I did that in the tutorial. And we will be making this ball tutorial. I'm just going to delete this and this because this is the ball specific. I'm just going to delete everything actually. So <laughs> delete everything in the update method and we will be redoing this from scratch. And then I'm going to delete this. And you guys probably don't have any of this if you've been doing it. So some of the things that we're going to need are very simply the paddles and the ball. Uh, in order to update the ball, we are going to need the ball itself, which is the rectangle, and then the rectangles for the paddles, because we need to know where the paddles are. So if we look at the tutorial real quick, and I'm going to get some errors. So if we look at it right now, you notice that we have these paddles, and you can move this one, and then you've got the AI paddle, and the ball is just sort of sitting there. And we want to be able to track where the ball is and where the paddle is, because if the ball is coming at the paddle right here, we need to be able to check, is the ball within this range? If it is, we need to be like, okay, we want to switch its velocity so that it starts going this way. And then we want to say, okay, if it's not within this paddle's range, then we want it to just let it go past. And then presumably the player loses, which will print out a message that do that. And then we're going to mimic that to the right-hand side. So basically we want to check and see if the ball's this way. And if it is, we want to bounce it um, once it gets into this range. And then if it's not, then we want to bounce it back. So how do we do all that? Well, first, let's create this ball, and we will give it a the ball rectangle, the player's rectangle, and AI's rectangle, and make sure you are updating it in the update loop. And then what we're going to do is inside of this update method, we want to check a few different things. So first of all, we want a couple variables to define our speed for us. So we have this variable. It's a double uh, VY and VX, which stand for velocity in the x direction and the y direction, which velocity is just this. It, it's not speed technically, it's speed with direction. And it's kind of weird to say speed with direction when this is just one direction. But like, so if it was 10, we'd be going down. If it's minus 10, we're going up. So that's basically the difference between velocity and speed. But um, I digress. Down here, if we go into this, we can tell which direction the ball is moving. If vx is less than zero, the ball is moving to the left, right? Because it's going to the left because of that velocity. And then else, if Vx is greater than zero, the ball is going to the right. So we know which direction it's going. Um, how do we actually move the ball? Well, we can just say the ball's rectangle. So this dot rect, which is the ball's rectangle, dot x plus equals Vx times dt. And we'll do the same thing for the y position. And I will explain why we're doing this. So uh, the way in physics that you get uh, position from velocity, it's called, uh, basically, if we're doing this in incremental steps, we're doing this uh, one step at a time, the way that uh, you get these things is basically position equals position plus velocity. And then you could say uh, velocity equals velocity plus acceleration. Uh, what this is basically saying is your position is dependent on how fast you're going, right? And so how far do we move you every single frame? Will we move you how far you are moving with respect to your velocity, which is why we multiply by dt. And then that gives us a jump every single frame. And we just do that with the x and the y. And now if we do this, these aren't really going to do anything, but the ball should at least be moving now. And so if we hit start game, or you guys, it'll just be there automatically. You don't have the menu. Um, and you notice the ball just starts moving, but we want it to stop if it hits a paddle. And if it doesn't hit a paddle, we want it to say game over in our console down here. So right here, we know it's going left. Well, if it's going left, we want to check and see if it's uh, within the range of that paddle. So if 
this.rect.x is less than or equal to this.paddle, or left paddle. So this is, we want to look at the left paddle because the ball is moving to the left. Um, dot x plus this dot left paddle dot width. And so we know that it's somewhere to the left of it. Now we want to check and see if it's in the range, the y direction. So we say and this dot rect dot y is greater than or equal to this dot left paddle dot y. And this dot rect dot y is less than or equal to this dot left paddle dot y plus this dot left paddle dot height. So then what we're saying here is if we are to the left of the paddle and we are in the range of the paddle, so we're, we're within that Y range, then we basically want to bounce it. So we just say this dot VX times equals negative one. And then we will say this dot VY times equals negative one. We'll just flip both of the directions, the X and the Y, just to make it move. And then what we can do is we can basically just copy this and then we want to change this to greater than or equal to, and we want to check against the right paddle, because now the ball is moving to the right in this if statement, and so we're basically just flipping our logic. And so then uh, the y logic will stay the same. We'll just change it to the right paddle now. And so now this should at least move it so that when the ball hits it, as long as it's within the range, it flipped. And you'll notice that something weird happened there, and um, it basically flipped no matter what. We need to fix that. So you'll notice it bounces perfectly fine, but then, um, first of all, with when it hits the right side, it's not bouncing at the right place. And second of all, if I go up here, and then I go down here, it'll still change it, which should not happen. That's because we're only checking if it's less than, we also need to check and see if it's greater than. So only if it's within the paddle, so it's in that paddle during this frame, we want to bounce it. So then we'll say, and this dot rect dot x is greater than or equal to this dot left paddle. Dot x. So if the ball is completely within the paddle. And then over here to fix it so that it's not bouncing at that weird angle, we want to check and see if it's greater than the right x. And we don't want to check the width because that will go too far. And we want to say this plus this rex width. So basically we want to check and see if the right side of this rectangle is greater than the left side of the right paddle. And then we want to check and see if the left side of our rectangle is we want to see, check and see if the left side of our rectangle is less than the right side of the right paddle. So then we'll say plus this dot right paddle dot width. And then we will say and so that we get all of those different variables. And then make sure you have an and up here too. So let's just review this one more time. So we're saying if this dot rect dot x, the left side of our ball is less than the right side of our paddle and the right side of our ball plus this dot rect dot width is greater than the left side of our left paddle and the bottom of our ball is greater than the top of the left paddle and the top of the ball is greater than the bottom of our paddle. If all this is true, then we want to flip it. So it's hit the paddle is basically what's happening here. And then we do the same thing on the right side, except we check it the other way. And then we want to say else if we're going right and the x plus the width. So, and the left side of the ball is greater than the right paddle plus the right paddle's width. So if the ball has gone to, is going to the right and its right side is greater than the paddle's right side, then we know that technically it's game over. The ball's already passed. So we'll say system.out.println. AI has lost a point since the AI is on the right side. And then we can do the same thing up here. We can say else if this dot rec dot X plus if the right side of our ball is less than the left side of our paddle. So if this dot rec dot X plus this dot rec dot width is less than this dot left paddle dot width or dot X, then we can say system dot out dot print line you lost. So basically you've lost. Now if we go and we run this, we should see if it goes past here, you say it says you lost. And then also if we go and hit start game, you'll notice even if I go in front of it now, it's not bouncing off my paddle because I didn't get in front of it while it was within the paddle's actual frame boundary. So let's go up here and then I'm just going to turn down the V and the X so that I can actually 
I get to it in time. So I'm just going to change this like minus 50. And then we'll go back into here. And so now that it's going slow enough, we can see. And you can sort of see how it jitters. And that's because if it's not going fast enough, it's going to look a little bit weird. But it bounces when it actually hits my paddle. And then the last things we need to check are basically the up and down. So we want to make sure that if it goes above the top of the screen, it bounces down. And if it goes below the bottom of the screen, it bounces up. And you would basically do the same things that we did here, except we would just be checking for VY. So we say if VY is greater than zero, we're going down. Then we want to say if this dot rectangle dot Y plus this dot rectangle dot height is greater than, so if the bottom of the ball is greater than constants dot window height, screen height, <laughs> then we want to flip it. So we say this dot VY times equals negative one. That way it goes up. And then we want to say else if, actually down here, else if VY is less than zero, we are going up. If this dot rec dot Y is less than zero, this dot VY times equals negative one. So we just flip it. If we're above the bottom, then we want to make sure we start going down again. And we can test this to make sure it's working just by increasing our VY to like uh, 300 or 400 and just make sure that it bounces when it hits the top of that. And you'll notice it bounces perfectly fine. And we have that same problem we had in the last tutorial where it goes above the toolbar a little bit. And that's just because we need to make sure that we're taking into account the uh, toolbar height. So then we'll say if it's less than constants dot um, toolbar height. And then we'll say, and if this dot rec dot y, oh, this should be zero. <laughs> this should be toolbar height. So we'll say constants dot toolbar heat. Then we flip it and this way it'll bounce as soon as it hits the top of that. And we'll notice, there we go. So now it bounces perfectly fine. So that's the ball movement. Sorry, this is so late. Um, I hope that made sense. I wasn't familiar with the code, so it's hard for me to jump back into this. It's been like eight months since I even looked at this code. And there's a lot of things that I would do differently now, but this is the way that I did it when I was actually teaching this tutorial. And I think, and this is feature parody. I think you should be prepared for the next tutorial by now. So if you guys want to keep going on with tutorials, then I hope you enjoy them. And thanks for watching this guys. All right. See ya.